Hey, Adam. What's up? Do you like covers? I do, man. When I get cold uh, in the winter's <laughs> night, I like to uh, really bundle up with covers. Is that what we're talking about? Yep, yeah, exactly. Great. I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you from a frigid St. Louis, Missouri this morning. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's that, not that cold. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> it's like 43. <laughs> Thank you, Al Gore. Uh, and what are we talking about today? Album covers. This is a, uh, was a question, an internal request and question from the Open Studio staff. Ah, yes, from uh, the, the lovely Dan Martin. About, yeah, he was, he's very into design and, and um, album covers and, and all things jazz historical. And the request was that we talk about our seven favorite jazz album covers of all time. Of all time. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and so we had a little trouble um, limiting it to just seven. So we may go over a little well, bit. Well, this is the is problem. Okay? Yeah, man, okay. if if there's one thing that jazz has probably as much or more than any other genre, it's amazing album art. Yes. I mean, there's really the history of the music is just chock full of incredibly beautiful and uh, interesting looking covers. I mean, iconic, I think I, we could say certainly from, from different eras. Yeah. I mean, yeah. All, all album art from from all genres can be its own thing. But there's something about the jazz album art. Man. There's right. some really uh, interesting uh, techniques used by different record labels at different times. And it's, it's yeah. very, very cool. Well, and I think it's topical now, too, with the documented with the Blue Note documentary that you were telling me about. I still haven't seen. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it just came out. Um, where they, they talk a lot about how the design elements yeah. uh, went into the creation of the of that, how that was a big part, um, uh, obviously along with the music and how the music was produced and, and um, directed and, and presented, how the, the album artwork was integral to that from the beginning. Yeah, if, if you don't know, all of the, the classic Blue Note album artwork that we think of uh, was done by, um, they were usually uh, portraits done by Francis Wolf, who's one of the co-owners of Blue, Blue Note during yeah. the sessions. So yeah. all of those shots that you see close-ups uh, were done during the sessions. And then they had a designer. I'm gonna Is that Reed it. Miles? Reed Miles, Reed thank Miles, you very yeah. much. I just remember seeing his name always on the back. Always on the back, yeah. He would come in and, and usually crop uh, uh, Francis Wolf's photo, and then add that beautiful typography that would right. became you know uh, possibly synonymous. sometimes to the chagrin of Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf would, <laughs> would not be happy with this cropping, but you know obviously it worked, man. Because think about those Blue Note album covers too. Like you can tell it's a Blue Note album, and they don't all look the same. I mean, there are some tropes that go along with with it, but they he got a different feel for everything, and then really got more and more into the typography of things right. until we get to some of the ones on our list today that are. Uh, very type centric. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's kick it off. I'm uh, going to kick it off today please. with uh, one of my favorites. Someday my prince will come. Miles Davis. Uh, just a beautiful portrait of Miles' wife at the time, Francis. And uh, there's something about the the portrait and the music that just goes along. I don't know what it is, but it all fits. It, it's all so beautiful and um, it just it really tells you everything you need to know about what's going to happen. I think that is a really successful album cover that does that, that, that sets you up for the vibe that the artist wants to throw at you. Even before you hear a note, you're ready for that vibe. You know? Absolutely. And I think, and I, yeah, I was just pulling up to look at it again. Cause I, I'm, I mean, I remember having this LP and listening to this for the first time. Um, of course, not when it came out, but, but, you know, it's that Columbia, they really had their own look. Of course, Blue Note, we always think yeah, about. Yeah, Columbia had a great look, though. Columbia had a great look yeah. with their, with their font and stuff. But I was trying to remember if there was, there is a little bit of miles. There's that silhouette kind of, um, you know, pink silhouette of him over there in the corner playing the trumpet. Yeah. Unmistake, like the way he stood and everything. And yeah. And then the photograph is very much like Columbia from that period with a lot of their albums, their pop albums and stuff with like this very, um, and I'm going way above my pay, way above my <laughs> pay grade in, in saying technicolor. I don't know. Would you apply that to this kind of like color? Very, very. It almost looks painted. Yeah. Like the color looks like it's a paint color, but yeah. it's, you know, of course, it's a photograph. Yeah, it's a photograph, and it's very accurate. But it's, it's certainly from that period. And I just remember like holding the album and looking at it and listening to it and the the liner notes on the back, just great design. And then just like the proportions on it too, are um, you know how. The woman is positioned there, how it's not like right in the middle. It's a little bit off center. And then, you know, the Columbia logo and great stuff. 
Yeah, it's such a it's such a great album cover, man. Wow. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's just I'm wondering on any of these albums though. Are we gonna are we are we gonna do any that are great album covers but horrible albums? Because I don't think so. So like, how much of this Ooh. is attached? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I already look at the list and I see we didn't do that. So I'm wondering that's how much, a good call. Yeah, how much of this is attached to what we know about the music? Yeah, it's it's certainly a part of it. We but, could do vice versa too. Horrible album covers, great albums. Yeah, that'd that be would good. be easier. I that'd think. be a lot that'd easier, be a easier actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next, um, I'm going to go with Out to Lunch because we mentioned this yesterday. Yeah, man. In, in, was that in the running uh, situation? It was. And so this, now this is our fir- first of what I'm sure is going to be many um, uh, Blue Note yeah. album covers because they're so great. But this one is a little bit different and has some of this different elements, um, you know, and it's got the clock and the, the great topography and then but then the photograph and then the kind of bluish blue note you know um sheen to the picture and i think it's great it's got a great sort of geometric proportion between the white space up at the yeah. top and 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 then the stretched out font and stuff well I think and then the composition of the photograph is geometric almost even though it's just a a will be back sign from obviously like a cafe or a shop in you know in the 60s when this was taken but right. there's like a you know there's a a, a window um what do you call that? A curtain? No, it's not a curtain. It's a yeah, a little shade. Little shade, and then there's like a, yeah. a string with a circle end hanging down. Oh, that that's looks great. geometric next to the clock, which is yeah. of course geometric. Next this is not a random picture. Is that what you're trying no, to say? It's, it's a very <laughs> well composed album cover for sure. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. All right. So number three, uh, another Blue Note album, and an iconic one for me. This is Blue Train, John Coltrane's Blue Train. Now, <laughs> you brought a photo that I. I've seen, but I don't associate. He's showing it to you. Yeah, because when we first talked, I was like, "Are you talking about the original uh, Blue Train cover?" Is that the original? When I do some research, man, the only one that comes up is the one I'm thinking of, which is that uh, you know classic close-up Blue Note. Yeah, uh, the cover of of the cover (laughs) of Train. I don't know if yours is the original. And then this one is kind of a little bit of a French cartoonish. Yeah, John Coltrane with uh, coming out of his saxophone some tracks. It's super cool, but it's almost like the cover of maybe this is the children's version of it. It does not. There's no children's (laughs) version of Blue Train. And then the way Blue Train, like the topography for that with those shapes, it reminds me of like a bowlerama, like the you know the bowling alley up there on Clayton Road. No, I'm talking about the one where where Train has his hand over his mouth and his other arm is behind yeah. his head and, and the this blue is sheen doing the, the yeah. during the session and uh, he's obviously thinking about something uh, and it's just so beautiful and again, whenever I see this, I hear those first notes. You know what I mean? And I don't right. know, like you said, if that's a Pavlovian from from loving the album so much, but it it sets up the the mood of the record perfectly. Yeah, and I mean, and then I we we just both discovered something, and I'm just looking at this. It says it's um, Jim Flora. Comp- the, the, this alternate design cover is by Jim Flora. So I don't know what that's about, um, but uh, we both realized as much as we've listened to this record and looked at it, Blue Train. I always thought it was Blue. T R A N E like Coltrane, but it's in fact Blue Train, like a choo choo, like train. a choo choo train. Yeah. So what what do you know about that? Yeah. Okay. Um, next, we're gonna go with um, Mode for Joe. Awesome. Still on Blue Note, and this kind of um, you know it's just three pictures yeah. of Joe Henderson. Super cool. You know, kind of catching him in 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 studio, I'm sure, and and different kind of looks, but. Um, similar and this was definitely some of those crop what we were talking about before with the with the photos that were cropped they started out uh bigger i think there was even some other people in them but, but it was cropped and then put together as as that kind of a what a cool can i say mf on our podcast I mean, you can do that it that guy looks amazing He's, I mean, the the progression of photos is he takes a drag off a cigarette and it just it looks so awesome man. and classic blue note styling it's great yeah and then this is getting into that you know black backdrop which they love to do where it was just kind of like almost like a um black box theater yeah. you know where there's the audience but or, or the listener or the microphone or whatever and i think that there's there a little bit of yeah the smoke in the last one the puff coming out and then you're getting the shapes i mean they always had this great advantage of the the blue note logo with that sideways oval kind of situation is that an oval yeah kind of a um, the logo shape, being able to play off that with the color, just the white, the red, and the black, and um, incredible. Yeah, man. What's with all these? They always have like different shades of different colorings and versions. Were those like faded out? Every Blue Note album cover you look at, I you have can no see idea. That's a great versions. question. Yeah, maybe some of our listeners could help us on that one. All right, I'm gonna go for my next pick. I'm gonna go straight in the '70s. I'm gonna go uh, straight Herbie. Mm. I'm gonna go to an album cover that 
I used to go to bed dreaming about that one day I would have this. And that's Herbie's Thrust <laughs> album. If you haven't seen it, go look it up now. It's Herbie Hancock flying a spaceship that's controlled by a keyboard. It's like a, it's like a spherical ship. And so the keyboard is round in front of him <laughs> and he's in some kind of alien land and there's like a purple mountain yeah. and he's got, you know, an Afro and he looks so cool and he's flying the spaceship with his super funky music. And <laughs> I, I saw this when I was a teenager and before I heard the music, yeah, you know what I mean? This is one of those albums that I didn't have that I really wanted. I saw it. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> I want to be a part of that. I knew who Herbie I was. I want to do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do psychedelics. <laughs> but it was like, it was eye-opening to me of like, wow. Right. Like keyboards can be cool. I know. <laughs> so was it the Purple Mountain, the cir circular, cylindrical keyboard, or the Afro that you wanted most in that picture? Or all all of them? three. <laughs> it was all. It still is all three, man. That's yeah. That's an inspiring album cover. I, and then it's like up in the clouds, you know. And you know the the circular keyboard. That's something I've actually thought about a lot. Somebody actually invented one at some point. I saw. But yeah. I always thought that that was such a great idea because the way our hands are, and our arms are made actually with this parallel keyboard it's very awkward moving up and down the i think instrument. it's one of the synth players for like lady gaga designed his own you know as you would if you were in that band you know you right. want to how can you be in the background <laughs> she's playing on a giant high heel <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh that's good all right cool thrust so for the are we at the last one already oh no we got a couple more we, we might talk more. about oh so this is so to get off the uh well we're off of the blue note thing a little bit but relaxing miles davis Beautiful. i always love this cover so this is getting into an area uh, and, and when I looked it up, I thought for some reason it was maybe Matisse, but it's not. But it's kind of Matisse-esque. Yep. Um, and then we're getting into, you know, sort of the genre of album covers that are either, you know, great artists or or, or modern drawings or paintings yeah. or inspired by those. Where there's no photographs, there's no reference to the musicians or anything, and there's no topography. It's just, well, there is some, but I mean, it's, it's all about just a modern piece of art, which totally. you could present in a square situation on the LP. So many great ones. I mean, think about most of those, you know, mid-60s Stan Getz, Xiao Gilberto, yeah. you know, like... Beautiful uh, color, beautiful and colors, shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even and the Coltrane sound is that like sort of modern painting of his silhouette. Yep. Uh, not silhouette, but his profile. Yeah. And uh, man, beautiful. Yeah, and I'm thinking even some. I mean, it's kind of fallen out of fashion a little bit, but like the there's a Wynton Marsalis record called J Mood mm. that was, I believe, what is the artist from? I'll remember in a minute from North Carolina. I think he did the that painting or or that actual design. Um, I'll look that up, but that's kind of the last, I'm sure there's been many since then, but that, that's, that's another kind of more, more modern late eighties. That's not really modern, is it? Yeah. Well, so I'm going to, I'm going to throw in uh, one for my last pick that is of this vein. And this is my favorite one from the genre of paintings. That's from, uh, Charles Mingus's Mingus, uh, um, oh, yeah. painting by S. Neil Fujita, and S. Neil, what's up? Uh, Sneal, maybe? No. Sneal. Uh, it's just so gorgeous. And, you know, Mingus Alam starts off with that um, uh, Better Get It In Your Soul. Yeah. You know, Ooh. which is just so down home. And, but still uh, super high art, you know? And yeah. I think that's what this painting says as you're listening to this music that, you know, this sort of down home, just church feel almost it can be at this level of high art and uh, i think mingus was a genius and and this makes me uh like the music even more yeah absolutely and that's columbia right mingus yeah because yeah, that's even got a little bit of that look of that um all right so i'm gonna go with the bonus because i think we're officially at one two three four five six seven right yeah, yeah. can we go eight let's do we're it we're gonna go seven plus and that's unity uh by by larry young i love this record Great i've always record. loved it and but i love the cover and this is going straight you know um straight Look, I gotta look it up again. Make sure I'm. No, not this is confusing. the masterpiece of of typography. Yeah, it's only type. I was making yeah, sure yeah. no photograph. And then it's got I, you know, it's it's always I never quite understood the orange balls that fell into the U, but it gives it such an interesting symmetry to the letters and it's like the spacing of them. So cool. And then again, how they place the logo, and then the fact it's just sort of black and white, the Blue Note yo logo between the T and the Y, and everybody's name there. I mean, Blue Note was great about like putting all the side men name like right there with the the leader like really sort of drawing into their whole thing about it being about the music it's so helpful now that we're doing cover. streaming too because you could actually see who's on the record <laughs> on like spotify without having to look anybody up exactly yeah 
Cool. Cool. All right. Well, um, should we do a little recap? Let's do a little recap. Okay. So we've got, um, we started with Sunday, my prince will come. Yes, Columbia sir. Records, Miles yes, Davis. Then we moved on to Out to Lunch, Blue Note by Eric Dolphy. Uh, Blue Train. We even talked a little bit. Uh, that's uh, John Coltrane, of course, Blue Note. We talked about that alternate cover that we're looking for a little more info on. Uh, the Child's Cover, we'll call it. Uh, Mode for Joe, Blue Note. Mm-hmm. Uh, Herbie Hancock, Thrust, Up in the Purple Clouds. Um, Relaxing, Miles Davis. Um, that's Prestige, I believe. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Charles Mingus Aum. Mingus Aum by Charles Mingus. Columbia and uh, Larry Young's Unity on Blue Note. Love it. Good. Um, well, if you have any of your favorites, we're kind of starting a new thing, you know, a way for people to kind of converse and share. We, 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 oh, we, really? Yes. Oh, mm. yes. I, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, you didn't ask. <laughs> I didn't ask. Uh, no, but we thought it would be fun to kind of have a central place. I know a bunch of you have tweeted us and hit us up on IG, Instagram, which is great. Um, but if you want to comment on today's episode, what we thought would be nice is if you go to our YouTube channel and all these episodes. Did you even know this, Adam? I don't know if you knew this. Every episode we do here is on YouTube. That's what those cameras are here for. I was aware. Oh, yes. you were aware. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you knew because yeah. we hadn't talked about that. No, I've but, started showering before we record these now. Oh, that's good. It's good for everybody. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can go, even if you're listening on the on the podcast, which many, most, if not many of you are, uh, continue to do that. But if you want to comment on today's episode, just go to youtube.com slash Open Studio Network, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, you just, thought I would have you just search you'll hear it on YouTube too and find it right away exactly yeah, yeah. exactly uh, but you can go to this episode and put a little comment and we're going to be in there checking interacting hopefully love to get your feedback on album covers in general and all things you'll hear it love it well okay. until next time you'll hear it